Hello and welcome back to Raising the Robins with Carl Shorten Athletic in the Bostic Premier League. Still, season one, uh, we're getting near the end though. I have, if you eagle-eyed among, eagle amongst you even, we'll see in the top right-hand corner. We're now at February, I think the last episode, we were, what, maybe December? So we've gone through a good few games um, and a lot has happened. A lot of different stuff has taken place. We're on the, uh, the transfer screen because I guess this is the, the most important place to start. So we have brought a few more players in. Um, not too much money spent, in fact zero money spent of course. The, the first guy is Thomas O'Connor. Uh, he came up and my scouts really highly rated him. Um, and it was just a, an obvious choice. Now if you see in the league he's got a 7.17 average rating so far. Good current, he's still got uh, you know room to manoeuvre and grow. He comes from Bromley, well that was his last club, he was on a free in the Valorama National. So what's that, two divisions above us I think. So made sense he's got two goals so far and three assists so great great little signing uh, he was a jumping class from what we had and we kind of needed a, a, a pure box to box midfielder we were kind of just you know filling square pegs with uh, square holes with round pegs if you like so he's a, he fits the bill and just fits straight into the squad and he's just been a revelation for us uh, the second <clears throat> player actually I might have touched on it last episode him we did sign James Hater obviously last um, we must have signed O'Connor as well, maybe I didn't mention it, I just edit, uh, uploaded the video today, I didn't edit it today, so it may have already been in there. He's declining, but he's starting to come good, he's got 4 goals in 13, 6.85, not amazing, but we'll see soon, he really is a foil for someone else to have a great, great impact on the team, and we'll get into that when we get to the games and what we've played, because um, there has been a lot of games and a lot of goals scored and a lot of different things happening. The final player we signed uh, was Joe Delaco. Now, he might not look too much, but he's got a little bit of room to blow. But again, he was like a 100 rating from my scouts. Now, he's starting to look like maybe that isn't the case, but he's not really getting in the team because the guy we've got playing at right midfield at the moment is just uh, doing bits. Um, so this guy, we're going to try and tutor him up. Well, not tutor him so much because that doesn't exist anymore. But we're going to try and build him up, him up, try and get his training going back the other way, get some of these going green and going up again rather than down. But he was released from Wolves a couple of years ago now, it looks like. But he's been on a free for a little while. But he, he was, yeah, very rated from us by my scouts, so we, we picked him up. He's on a fair bit of money for the fact he's not playing, but if we get an injury to the right-hand side, he should be an able deputy. Uh, the other big thing, really, is that um, we've got a lot of contracts signed. So we managed to tie Corboa down to a new contract. I think he was actually on a part-time before, but he was running out. No, he was on a contract. He was running out. We tied, tied him down. Same with Daniel Popo, who's just a linchpin in our centre back uh, in our defence. Had to sign him up. So he's he's staying with us. Um, Delaney, who I think is actually the guy who's playing on the right hand side, so he's signed up for a bit longer. And Adams, another midfield centre midfielder. Uh, he is sometimes right back, but it's mostly midfielder. Uh, the main two really uh, are midfielders. So they're signed up for a good period of time. We did have one out. Uh, he went to Needham Market. It's Tommy Bradford. He, we didn't have a choice in the matter. But I also wasn't too worried. Uh, he wasn't getting in the team. We, we didn't really have a position for him. He was a bit of a sub sometimes up front, but not really. So he goes on a free. He's doing okay for them, but that is a division. Division, what, maybe one down perhaps, maybe even two. I'm not too sure. But yeah, he, he, he goes. It's not, it's not even money off the wage because he was on a part-time contract. He was just literally on an appearance fee. So... What we'll do, we'll jump into the game. So obviously last time out, we had Harlow, and Wingate and Finchley. Um, we were a bit open up in the air about where we came back to. We've gone quite far and probably further than I planned to. But I just had a bit of free time at work, partly. But also, when you see what's happened, I just wanted to carry on. So, uh, Harlow and Wingate was up here. A 4-1 win against Harlow and a 2-0 win against Wingate. It's the best episode we had yet. We had two wins, uh, following on a bit of good form as well. So we carried that on with a 2-1 win against Bishop Stortford. And we were 1-0 down in this game um, quite late. And another legend, we've obviously got James Hayter. They've got Jamie Curtin still, but he um, he's still going. But he banged in a penalty on 65 minutes. But we we changed that. We've, we've trained the other three at the back formation. And we gave it just a bit of a spin of the dice in this, after their goal. And it O'Connor grabbed his first goal pretty much, not straight away, but fairly soon. And then two minutes later, or sorry, five minutes later, we added a quick second through Luke Delaney and turned it around to win 2-1. And bear in mind, they were below us in the league. I think they were bottom even, or very, very low below us. 
it was a must-win game. You know, if we want to look at staying up this season, which that was our kind of aim at the time, that was a must-win game, and certainly not a, non, a must-not-lose game. But we really need to be winning the games against the teams at the bottom, and we managed to secure it. Luckily, we then followed that up with a game against Leatherhead, who were not top. I don't think. I think they were third at the time, so we weren't expecting anything in this game. So I switched out to the three at the back formation from the off. Uh, Karoma five minutes in gave gave us a lead of six minutes here it says here but it was on five on the clock um, on the half hour mark just after they did equalise uh, which wasn't great we then did get a Mendy free kick about ten minutes later direct free kick great free kick he scored a couple of those this season actually he's not very good generally but he's banged in a couple of free decent free kicks so yeah that brought it back to two all but then we went down uh, to three two what's that like my notes say in two minutes but I don't think that was. Yes, it was. It's about 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 eight minutes. Uh, they scored and then equalised and then got the winner. Seventy-two minutes. We we couldn't find a way back into the game. We're going to put the match stats here. Uh, as you can see, we're we're doing a lot a lot better in the conversion of our shots to uh, on target and getting more shots away. And the team in third that we've done that to, we narrowly narrowly lost. So that's not too bad. Uh, we then played Margate away from home. We got a free all in this game. Again, we were quite dominant in this game, um, so to come out with a draw was a little bit disappointing, but we tried the free at the back again, uh, very much more of a counter-attacking rather than the possession that we were doing with the 4-4-2. Um, I felt there was something a little bit missing with the 4-4-2, but boy has that changed. We've had a little, we have a little bit of a tinkering game sometimes as well that I can change up if, if things are going right. The assistant suggested something in one of the later games, I, I don't think I wrote it down in my notes, but it kind of worked in that game. Um, and we implemented a few more games and it did kind of work so it might be something we bring into the tactic full time but at the moment I'm saving it as a kind of reaction uh, if we need something rather than just relying on it from the start a little bit if we need to then we can always change it up but yeah free it back in this one uh, we went one hill down again their guy got a hat trick uh, Omar Karoma got two in this game a penalty after 16 minutes pretty much immediate equaliser um, before they went um, second, they scored their second with their only two shots of the game on target at that point. Before, yeah, Karoma got his second on 53. Uh, Hayter gave us the lead uh, on 63 minutes, but literally a minute later, Alex Fisher got his got his hat trick. Is it Fisher or Flilsher? I can't quite make that out. It's going to annoy me. Flisher, Flilsher, Flisher. Not sure. But thrill draw, and again, Margate, a team that were kind of floating around us at the time. So again, not a bad result away, away from home, really. We then beat Tombridge Angels 6-4 and straight away you can see a first half, what, five goals from Omar Karoma. I mean, he got his hat-trick inside 22 minutes. It said 22, it was 21 minutes. But I mean, Kyle Bailey got four, four of his own. Not enough to grab the man of the match. It was Karoma's without a shadow of a doubt. Um, but I mean, it was a 10-goal game and nine of them scored by two players. It's absolutely insane. Um, but it was a bit of a tussle we were what 3-0 up I think 4-0 four, four up That's something like that possibly 4 and then they started pulling a few back and then we just we went 6-4 and I mean just what a game and if you look 9 goals on target shots on target we scored 6 of them that's absolutely insane they got 6 on target to score 4 of them just a really clinical finishing type of game not very not one for the defensive purists not one for Alan Hansen to enjoy but certainly one for the you know the attacking football players to enjoy, and it got my heart rate racing this one. We had Haringey Borough next, and they were someone we played, I think, or mentioned earlier on the season. They were flying quite high, and I think they were still doing quite well at this point. They might even still be. I think they have dropped a little bit, but we did go one nil down from Femi Akin one day, and I seem to remember him giving us a bit of grief the first time we played them. I think we played them on an episode, in fact, because they were high up there, and we just gave it a go. But Omar Karoma, again, with another goal, 49 minutes. A very even game. A one-all draw is probably quite fair. So we take that draw against a very high-flying team. And at this point, we were starting to look like our safety in the division was kind of a foregone conclusion. It was getting to that point. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it, it's still so tight in this league that, it, you know, a good, a bad run of form. And you're getting sucked straight back in. We then played Merstham, another team I think were up the top, or certainly early on we played them, and they gave us a bit of grief before. I think they were a double header with Haringey actually before. I might be wrong with that, but yeah, Karoma got a penalty after three minutes. Uh, they got an instant equaliser pretty much. I mean, it's, it's it's nine minutes, but it was like pretty much the next highlight that, that did it. Delaney got one, uh, Adams got one to make it 3 1. Uh, they pulled one back to make it 3 2 before James Hayter made it 5 2. They just made secure of the game if you hear a bit of funny noise it's the monitor my daughter's making some 
movements in her sleep. I'm watching her tonight for a little while. But we absolutely dominated this game. 16 shots, 12 on target against their 9-5. to We're always leading the possession. Um, but a good 5-2 win away from home against a very good, solid team up until that point in the season in the division. Corinthian Casuals up next. Um, they were a bit more... I think they were above us as well, actually, or certainly around us again. We went 1-0 down very early to their only sh shot on target at that point, and as you can see, they only had two in the whole game. So to, for us to have lost this game would have been absolutely disgusting. 44% possession as well to 56. I mean, we dominated this game. Coroma comes up big again with a goal in 47 minutes just after half-time. We added a quick second for O'Connor on 50 minutes before then 10 minutes later, Luke Delaney made it 3-1, and we basically held out. We not, not held out, we dominated the game. We run this game, we managed it, we we got to 90 minutes at 3-1 and kept it that way. We were very content with the 3-1, we didn't push for more, we got the win we needed, three points in the bag, off we go. Now Enfield, this was a game I played at work not too long ago actually and it's still ranking me a little bit. As you can see we scored a 90th minute own goal and they didn't have a shot on target the whole game. If you're looking for a definition of being FM'd, it is this game. 57% possession, 14 shots to 8 on target. Absolute dominant game. Every highlight was ours. Every highlight that started their way, we got the ball back, we kept, we got a chance, we we had an effort. And to lose it like that, it was a shot. It just pinged. They crossed the ball in. Their guy had a shot. It was flying wide, hit our defender, Dan King. And went in, the keeper had no chance. He dived the other way at that point. He, yeah, it was a hard one to take, especially given the, how well we played, not just in this game, but in the previous sort of five, six, seven games. Okay, we didn't, didn't win them all, but we got some, you know, a, well, we did lose one or two, but we got some telling results, got some, you know, teams above us. And it wasn't just that, it was the performances as well. It really felt like things were clicking and to not grab the goal in this game and lose it in the manner we did was just heartbreaking, really, yeah. But we, we moved on, we had one more game um, to play before we get to today's games. That final game was Lewis, uh, Lewis, and we drew four all in this one, another, you know, thriller. And their goal scorer Francis Ford Charlie Coppola oh man he just scored every shot he had and they got a 90th minute as well to equalise the game we we did so well in this game we went 1-0 down inside 10 minutes Coppola getting the goal it says 12 it was 10 um, before Coroma again a uh, man on fire makes it 1-0 uh, Coboa pretty much immediately made it 2-1 Coppola then with his only two shots and their only two shots in the game at that point um, grabs one before Delaney grabbed a rebound of a free kick I think it was Mendy with a free kick Luke Delaney hit the bar, come back and tapped it in. Um, the equaliser from Coppola was absolutely shocking. We were pressing, going for a chance. We were hitting shots of their goalkeeper, firing out all, all left, right and centre. And they literally just lumped it up the pitch over our defence and he was in and scored. I just couldn't believe it. But then we got our own one. Um, Com Com Coroma's second one was an absolute shocker as well on, on their point of view from defending. So it kind of evened it out a little bit. But we should have won this game. And we didn't. 31 shots. How do you have 31 shots? The half of which pretty much are on target and draw a game. I mean, that shows a little bit of the defensive frailties we have. But if you have noticed a lot of the time in these games, we're playing the same 11. We're playing Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. So we're getting seven days to rest between games. So we can. And we're not getting any injuries. We're not getting anything like that. Very rarely. So we can put the same 11 out and just keep the consistency. And I think that has been a big part, A, of the way we're playing, but also getting these players to play the way we're playing. Because we can just keep them... We can just keep them going. And, I mean, that today brings us to today's games. We're going to try and play two. Uh, Time-wise, we might have to either edit it, seriously edit it, or just play the one. I'm not too sure. The idea is to play the two, because we're playing Folkestone and Victor first at home. And then in a week's time, we've got Dorking Wanderers, which is away from home. We'll look at the league now, actually, as well. So, at the moment, we are sixth. But we are a good way back. Eight points, I think that's eight points back, on Folkestone and Victor. Uh, they're just above us and if you look Dorking Wanderers afterwards they're, they're above so obviously a couple of good goal swings in these games and we're right back in the mix right back in the story of promotion we're three points clear of the teams behind us but if you look at the points here it's so congested we, we should be safe we're 20 points clear of the bottom three that should be fine even more shockingly the Lewis game for all they're, they're, they're one point above a relegation of minus 14 goal difference it's absolutely disgraceful um Yes, yeah, so we've got Folkestone today at home and then Dorking away. Two massive games, two mahusive games. So I thought we'll try and get both of those played. I mean, if you look at our schedule as well, generally, we've got Potter's Bar, Brighton Sea. All these are down the bottom. So we, if we can get a couple of results here, 
he just build the momentum up after that loss again just get this sort of form going again if you look at the form it's absolutely insane and it, it's promotion form if we'd have played well at the start of the season who knows where we'd be talking about now now I don't think we're going to get promoted even if we get into the playoffs I don't think we're going to have enough about us um, and if we, and if we do I'm not sure we'd have enough about us to have a real push next year I think this year we need to do what we're doing consolidate get this team grounded and next year have a real push and maybe even try and get up as champions get a trophy in the cabinet and go up with some real conviction not not sort of piddling through the playoffs and hoping we get through and this that and the other I want to go through as champions so if we go up this year I'll take it obviously but I don't think we're going to get I don't think we have enough to get there it's we're quite far back we were getting quite close we were in touching points of about two three points at one point but it has fallen back away with that those couple of draws and a loss in there so, yeah, I don't think so. But Karoma's moved up into the top goal scoring charts. He's on 22 now, second. We're probably going to see a few more players start peering up in assists and average rating and stuff because players are starting to find their form, find find their place and find their way. I think that's key. We're not going to get the um, the clean sheets. Nowhere near, I wouldn't have thought. We could see far too many goals. But, yeah, so we'll be back for the lineup shortly. I'm going to probably have to record the games in a bit, in a bit later because I was hoping I'd do it before the missus got home from Ikea. But she's on her way back now. So I just thought I'd record the intro, set it up, and then later on if I get a chance I can record the gameplay and hopefully edit it and render it and upload it tomorrow at work. And Friday. Yeah, no, probably not Friday. Um, yeah, so we're back for the lineups for today's game shortly. You probably know them. You've seen the same team pretty much all these games. Back shortly. So here we are, back at the team screen uh, for the lineups. A few hours for me, just a few moments for you. And I... Literally at the end of the last recording, uh, the last or well, the last part, I saw the length of the file and the the catch up we'd had. And the, we are going to play just the one game today. That that file was like seventeen minutes long with a bit of creative cutting and whatever. I can get that down, I'm sure. But the two games will be too much. So we're going to play the Folkestone and Victor game now, and I'll probably play the next game, which we plan to the Dorking game, and do that as the next episode. I am off work next week, so I need to get the the three episodes for next week out and done as soon as possible because I'm probably not going to be around or doing much time to. To re rec it's not so much the recording, more the the editing and the um, the uploading that sort of stuff. Because I'm gonna be spending time with the family and all that sort of stuff, so I'm not gonna have time to do that. Whereas at the moment, I'm kind of doing a lot of it at work during the day. So yeah, we're gonna try and get them out. So we'll do the Dorking game, and then we'll we'll I'll try and play on a little bit from tomorrow, and then I can get the last episode done at some point for Friday. But yeah, uh, this is the lineup. So this is the lineup we've had pretty much for a good sort of six or seven games now very consistent and it's probably helped in a lot of what we're doing and also uh, getting used to the formation getting used to setting just doing what we're doing so we've got Hater and Karoma up front Karoma the main man he's just bagging the goals left right and centre we've got Kobo on the left who seems to have come into his own a lot more now he's very um, very more unpredictable in what he does he's, he's creating chances creating goals pops up a couple himself as well We've got Adams in the middle with O'Connor. They formed a very good partnership in the middle as well. And then Delaney on the right-hand side, keeping the you know the really good um, Delaco on the bench out of the team. The new signing, I've, you know, he's kept him away from the team when I signed him really to come in as first first choice. And we've got Mendy at left back. Probably will be a replacement we need to look at, but he's hitting some free kicks in here and there, and he's he's stepped up as well. We've got Popo at right centre back along with King at right back. We've also got the other King who's on loan at centre back, and he's not doing amazing, but we seem to have stepped up a little bit since he stepped out, and Adenyi stepped. He stepped in, and Adenyi stepped out a little bit, a little bit more pacey, a little bit more um, cover for Popo in that regards. We do get caught out occasionally, but you know it's going to happen at this level. That he, you know, he's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. We get a lot more greens lately. I don't know if it's because that last result has dropped them down a little bit. But I'm hoping you get to see the team perform like we have been in the last couple of weeks and not a sort of a reflection of the last game that we played, which I think off the top of my head was like a three-all draw or four-all draw or something. Hopefully we see the, the cold short one I've been seeing for a good couple of weeks. Okay, we got a couple of draws and this, that, and the other, but we were dominant and rampant in some games. As we hopefully hate it with his two pace manages to get there. He gives it back to King, into Popo, finds O'Connor, Adams... I mean, I think this is still the kickoff highlight, so whether this is going to come to anything, I doubt it. As they lump it forward, get there, he does, finds Koboa. It's still going on, it is two minutes in, so maybe not the, the throw in, the kickoff highlight. But claims by their goalkeeper, who boots it straight out, and they do take the possession of it. I mean, really, that should have been our right back, King's ball, and it's over the top. That's what I'm talking about. We do get caught out by those a bit too, too much, and we do actually 
tend to either go in level or down at half time and it's the team talk at half time that tends to get us spurred on a little bit in the second half but it's like we've just seen that ball played by our midfield into Kaboa he doesn't get the end of it their one does and he slots it in it's it's a lot of the similar goals that we're conceding unfortunately another highlight starts there in but we win it back we just need to keep it here I mean, we are playing a very short possession sort of yeah possession short passing kind of game but we do play an awful lot of long balls a lot of them do go wayward I don't know what's causing that and if I could eradicate it I would because we give away a lot of you know we have a lot of possession in games but we do tend to give away a lot from silly passes that then put us under quite a lot of goals conceded from from that situation we give away a stupid pass a stupid ball and then they got the other end and score it but Karoma's in <laughs> Karoma scores this man is a god in this division and he's basically fired us to certainly to survive I'm, I'm fairly sure we're safe this year but he, he, he could be, a couple of good results, could be firing us to uh, a little bit more. Not the title, obviously, that's done, dusted and gone. That's five minutes, it's one all, it's crazy, like, the highlights that are happening in this game and the goals that are happening. Has he been given us offside? No, I'm not even looking at it, I don't care if it is offside or not. So we have a corner here on 39 minutes, it's literally the first highlight that's happened since our goal. The equaliser, and we take the lead through Delaney. Karoma nods it down, and we scored again. We do. Be, we seem to be getting a few from set pieces now as well. I've created a few. Well, not a few. I've created a set piece routine. Um, shifted a few players around because we were getting caught out a bit like we were in the Arsenal save in terms of um, leaving like no man back and stuff like that. So I've stopped that happening and just changed a few positions around in attacking movement as well. As we get into half time, just before our goal was well, I did change the, the little tactical tweak I mentioned earlier on, where I changed the line of engagement to be one notch higher. It does seem to help, so it, it might be something we eventually we eventually bring into the um, the formation, the tactic as a as a gen, as a generic sort of way of playing, I guess. But for now, it's a responsive thing, and it seems to be doing good things for us when we respond. As so we have another free kick here, it's Mendy whips it in. And it's lofted at the goalkeeper, it's Delaney. I think that's his second goal of the game. It is. So Karoma with one, Delaney with two, and 3-1 turnaround from a 1-0 deficit against the team that are above us in the league, don't forget. We are a newly promoted team. We're not amazing. We haven't got the best players, but we're making the sum of our parts better than the other team, what the other team seems to have. And coming together and playing as a team, and it just seems to be working out right now as they have a chance to make me eat my words and pull one straight back. We get it initially clear. They strike on the outside of the box, bizarrely, the goal scorer. But we get it. We don't quite manage to clear it fully. We did have a chance to attack then, but we've been left short at the back. But we're getting some good blocks in here. And if we can just nick it back and counter ourselves, or just not concede from this highlight, that would be amazing. But space out wide here. Mendy pushes him back inside. They are working their way back in. Some good one-two pass in there, but he puts his shot wide and we breathe again. Another highlight there, way, and it's a throw in sort of about the halfway mark, halfway line, and there's another ball over the top, and they scored again. We, I just can't seem to eradicate these out. I don't know what else I can do. Maybe it's a case of switching the goalkeeper to a sweeper so we can sweep up in behind. I'm not too sure. So there's another highlight, starting with our goalkeeper. He managed to keep our possession, luckily. As Dixon goes through, we've just made a couple of subs. I was about to get onto it. We've made a couple of subs. Dixon's come on for Hater because Hater's having a bit of a stinker. He's had a few stinkers <laughs> recently. And Mike Dixon, who's come on, has scored the goal. We didn't change the role. Normally, I do change him back to a target man when we bring him on, but we didn't today. We left him as the deep line forward, and he's he should score the first one, but it's a good save. But he's there on the rebound, puts it away. Four-two. Fifteen minutes to go. That should be the game done. As I did three points on the board, and that gap closed in the league. All importantly, goal kick for them or a free kick from their goalkeeper rather they do get the second bite at it as they have a chance to get in behind us at the back Roland does and it's 4-3 with 10 minutes to go we need to see this game out we can't be giving away another two goal oh here we go I've spoken too soon haven't I it's hit the bar get it away that's it we just need to see this game out we can't be giving another two goal advantage up and not winning the game oh I thought that was going to be a penalty then it looked like it was one that was just set up to be a penalty kick. It's in. I thought the keeper saved it and put it wide. How have we drawn this game? 
we drop far too many points. A lot of the draws we've had have been from this position. We've been winning the game and we just seem to fall asleep in the last minutes and just concede sloppy late goals. If we eradicate... Ah, oh, what? It's off the bar. I mean, if we eradicate those goals, we'd be so much higher at the table. It'd be unreal. Oh, don't do it. Just don't... Get it away. That's it. A four all draw is bad enough. Losing 5-4 would have been too much to take. But yeah, not the best ending to the episode. Like I say, we cut into the, what, just the one game now. We'll come to the Dorking game. I'll probably play it now and get it recorded now. So I can edit two of them tomorrow and start getting them uploaded. But yeah, not amazing. A uh, bit disappointing in the end. We should have won that game. Deserved to win that game. Stats-wise, it's close. But with a 4-2 lead, we should not be giving those up. So we'll have a quick look at the league table, actually. See where that leaves us standing. Let the assistant take that. I'm not happy. Once we got 4 2 up, we should. Should I drop back defensive sooner? Probably. But as you saw, they still got the goal anyway. It made very little difference. Like, if they want to score a goal, they're going to score a goal. Our defence just melt away at the end of the game. So, yeah, as we are, we're still sick. We're st we haven't lost ground. We haven't gained ground. Um, we need a good result now against Dorkin, really, to really put the pressure on and hope that they have a bit of a. A tough run in and can drop some points themselves here. So who they got? I mean, they got some easier games coming up as well. Some tough ones in there, but Bishop Stortford now should be a win for them, really. You would think. So we're going to come back for the Dorking game next time. If you've enjoyed today's episode and enjoy seeing me suffer in, these, in this manner, please do drop a like, um, drop a sub on the channel while you're here as well if you're new, and any comments as well. I'd be grateful if you drop them below, and I like I say, I always reply to them and always acknowledge them. So yeah. Until next time for the Dorking game. And I might even... Who we, who's, who we got with it? I mean, I'm making this go on a bit longer than needed. needed. We got Potter's Bar after it. I might do a double uh, on that. Also, yeah. If we got... Yeah, I probably will do. So, until next time, I'll see you later. Take care.